we worship you, we magnify you, we extol you. Lord, we appreciate you. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We pray that you will take charge of this session. Thank you because you started with us in a great way. You've taught us a lot already. Lord, we ask that you will meet with everyone at the point of our needs. We want practical solutions. We want answers to the questions in our heart. Lord, please give us answers and let this power of planning be released into our lives in the name of Jesus. Help us as we start this journey to begin to see results. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You may please be seated. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Uh, we appreciate your presence and we believe that your coming will not be in vain. It will be worth coming in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm talking about the power of planning. And I'd already planned to introduce planning and say all the things that Leia has said. But he has made my work very easy. So when I see areas that he has covered very well, I won't dwell uh, too much on it. So the first thing and the main message we have for you today is that God is a master planner. And he expects us to imitate him as dear children. You still remember Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1? God said, be imitators of God as dear children. So we're expected to imitate God. And God is a master planner. Do you know that you were sent here on an assignment and given specific time to achieve it? Job chapter 14 verse 5. Job 14 verse 5. It says our days are numbered. From before we were born till the day we die. It's numbered. Look at me. Don't write too much. When you were sent to this side of eternity, you were given some days. They are numbered. So you are not here by accident and then go by accident and then you do what? No. Those days have been numbered. You know the meaning of number. We said, I'm putting five things here. This is number one. I cannot put number two as number one. So for each day, there are things that God has yet marked for you to do. For each day, for each week, there are certain things you ought to accomplish. There are activities you need to engage yourself with that will culminate into your destiny. So when we talk about destiny, it's, uh, it's not just one specific thing like that. That you can say, oh, my destiny is to go to that specific place. No, there are many activities that you need to be involved with, achieve do successfully that will eventually culminate into your destiny and you can say I have fulfilled purpose so imagine if it's numbered let's, even, let's just give a little analogy uh, I don't know what's um, 100 can you give me 100 times 366 three, three, 36 million or something that's the number of days of somebody <laughs> and those people are not many that will live for 100 years. So that means each day of that 36, there are things you must accomplish. There are things that must be done. Maybe when you are born by age 6, your teeth must be coming out. They just must be out, <laughs> coming out gradually. If it's not achieved, somebody will get worried. I still remember taking a child to the hospital. And what was the main reason? Because one to refuse to come out at the right time is because I knew the time it should come out. If I didn't know, maybe I wouldn't have been bothered and we wouldn't have done anything. Please be bothered. <laughs> there are things you should, be, you should have accomplished by now. Many people are behind schedule and they don't know. If you don't plan to spend your time fulfilling your own activities that should add up to your destiny. You may never fulfill purpose. Yes, we'll get to heaven, but some people will regret certain things. Time is a builder of life. And all human beings have the same 24 hours. But what you do with your time will determine what you become. Thank God Thank God for the Holy Spirit that says Leia should take the opening charge. How did it turn out to be what it is now? Because from age 13, 
he has started spending his time to go in a specific direction. What do you think I'll be in 10 years time? Anybody? Just guess. What do you think I'll be in 10 years time? Eh? International minister. I'm not likely to become a fashion designer in 10 years time. I'm not likely to become an owner of one big hospital where there are many doctors and they are now controlling them in 10 years time because I studied medicine. No, it's not likely to be. How do I know? Because what I'm spending my time to do now is to be a minister. What are you spending your own time to do? If you are spending your own time to watch home video, in 10 years time, you will be a professional home video watcher. Time is a builder of life. Even if you pray, and you say, God, lift my head up, help me. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. Fine. God is saying, yes, I have answer, but what are you spending your time on? If you don't spend your time to engage in activities that will accomplish a specific goal, then you become nothing in 10 years time. And that's not the plan of God for any of us. I like to tell you today, if you don't learn any other thing, that life is predictable. Life is predictable. If you spend your time now working in errors, making mistakes, they are helping, everybody is correcting you, just doing baby, 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 baby. In 10 years' time, you might still be a baby. There are many babies at 40. And there are 12 year old, 13 year old who have a goal. I remember I started solving jam UME questions from GS2. I, I don't want to overestimate. Let me just say GS2. It's likely to be GS1 anyway. That's when I started gathering UME questions and looking at them because from that GS1, I wanted to be a doctor. Why did I want to be a doctor? Because I perceived a calling to serve God and perceived medicine alongside as a will of the gospel. And you know, your environment kind of gives you a, an interpretation of your vision. It might not be fully correct, it might not be perfect, but the environment I was in, I saw only males as ministers of the gospel, as what we call pastors. So the understanding I got is that I was going to marry a pastor and I will help that pastor to succeed very well. That was my understanding of God calling me into ministry. And I felt, oh, if I studied medicine, and as a professional cause, I could assist him financially and all of that and all of Well, the, the, the vision was good. I worked towards it, but it made my life turn out better than I ever imagined. So though my husband is a pastor, but he's also doing, he's doing other things alongside. So he doesn't even need my money to survive. Are you with me? If you plan, if you have a goal, the worst thing that will happen to you is the level of that plan. God said, I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or imagine. Begin to imagine. Begin to plan with the goal. That's a message. Very simple. Because what God will do eventually will be higher than your plan. So I've given you my own plan now. And if I follow Leia's pattern, God actually asked me, when do you want to get married? In a dream. God deals with me in, a dream, in dreams a lot. And I said 26. Because I was graduating at 26. No wasting of time. No. There was a book. A book of my plan for wedding beside me as I was also planning to do final MBBS exam to become a doctor. Many things you think are not possible is because you didn't plan for it. Somebody say, eh, medical doctor. You were writing final year exams and writing, uh, preparing for wedding. Yes, I did all. And people that did not prepare for wedding failed. I still passed. So the least that could happen was what's I saw in the revelation. 
26. That's the list. And I got married at that 26. But somebody is asking you, where do you want to get married? Eh, I don't even know. What's likely to happen, ma? Person may marry late because there's no plan. Another person is saying, hey, but Dr. Folu, what if, eh, what if it's not God's will? But God says, commit your work to me. I will fulfill your plans. So if you have no plan, what is he going to fulfill? What if it is God's will? What if it's not God's will? But what if it is God's will? But you, you have no plan. You have no plan to go to U.S., fine. You have no plan to go to U.K., fine. No Canada, not South Africa, fine. In the Nigeria that you are sitting in, say, no plan to improve your life. You are just sitting down there. and say, God's will, we shall do. Think now, pray, and download that God's will and begin to plan with it. Download it and plan with it. That's the message. Planning is the secret of achieving purpose and becoming successful. You see any of your classmates that is better than you, it's not because he has a bigger brain, it's because he planned. See your classmates who has passed professional exam and you have not yet passed, he's not more brilliant than you, he planned for it. Maybe from year two, he had already planned that by the time I'm completing, I would have written the first stage of that professional exam. Immediately, one year after, I'm going to write the other one. So when some people are joking and jesting, he has a plan that he must stick to. From what we have said today, that means the first step is to even identify purpose. Please go to my YouTube page, channel, and listen to the message on vision. That will be like the preamble of today's meeting. That was Youth Fiesta some three years ago. Vision. You need to understand vision. How do people receive vision? But in a nutshell, when we say plan today, we are not saying you just sit down in one corner of your room and devise. Mm, I want to plan to go to Canada. Who told you? God must tell you something. Then you plan with it. But we are saying don't be blank and feel cool going around blank. Go to the presence of God. As you pray and cultivate a personal, very good intimate relationship with God. God will be giving you pictures. And one thing about God is that no matter how young you are, even if you became born again last week, God speaks to you at your own level. He can give you a dream. He can give you a vision. But he will give you pictures that you will you just know something inside you that you are not meant to be a hairdresser. Something inside you will be telling you you are going to be this and that. So if you have a little idea about it, start researching into that thing. No matter how little it is. Okay, I think I love professors. I'll be I'd like to be a professor like uh, Folu Olatono. What does it take to be one? Find out. Don't just think alone. Then you begin to find out and work in that direction. Uh, planning has been defined. Let me just say so that it will register in your heart again. It means forethought. You are thinking ahead. The process of thinking about your desired purpose. Thinking about the objectives that are necessary to achieve that purpose and determining the best way to achieve them. We're not here for theory today. The idea is not for you to learn some things and put in your head. So if God has told you that you are going to be, uh, give me an example, a businesswoman. That's the goal. You are going to be a businesswoman. But it, it, if you follow the things we have learned earlier on, that goal is too vague. What type of business? You must know the type of business. I'm also a businesswoman. My business is public speaking. It's different from somebody who is selling palm oil. So you must identify what a specific thing that you are supposed to be doing. So when you know that specific thing, you start thinking about it. This is my purpose. This is what I want to achieve. 
But what makes it sweet, what makes it interesting is if it's God that is giving you that idea and then in his presence, you begin to think and whatever is the action plan, the activities, there's still a part of it that can bring benefit to the kingdom of God. So engaging in logical, rational, analytical thinking, reasoning, to determine the activities, to arrange the activities. That's the planning. So what do we use? We use our brain. We use our brain. Many people don't like thinking, and that's why many people are living below average. You must think. There, there should be times in your life that all you are doing is thinking. And let me quickly say, please, don't live your life for now. Now. Think ahead. When you live your life for now, you waste a lot of resources. You must learn to think ahead. I know from my experience in nutrition practice, people don't even think of what they eat. Am I right? You just eat whatever is available. How can you be healthy that way? Planning is a process of determining and setting the necessary actions to fulfill a dream. I think by now, it has registered in your head. If you come across people who say greatness is achieved by luck, walk away from them. They can't be your friends. You see people that say, I'm all over here. All the rich people in Nigeria are thieves. Not all of them are thieves. If you believe that and you make it a part of your life, you are, it, it can affect your level of success. Because that belief is wrong. That successful people are thieves. Oh, it's because they are lucky. It's because of the time they were born. It's because of... No! People plan and plan their way into success. The truth is that it takes sound planning to succeed. A very critical part of planning is the programming. Some of us even plan, but we don't program. So programming will entail that you put the activity, you arrange them. Which one is the first thing? Which one is going to be the next thing? You organize the activities that are important for that. Okay, let's use refreshing manner as an example. And as I'm using that example, just imagine one area of your life that you are not very happy with. And when you get back home, apply these principles and plan it. In the next few months, you will see results. So when we started Refreshing Manor, God gave us a goal. We want to help people to learn the word of God, to be refilled and refreshed. So that would mean that there will be uh, uh, seminars to teach. Thinking through some people prefer to read. That means there will be pamphlets to read. We call it newsletters. To learn, to teach people. Some, there will be books. So that means we have to write books. Some people will not be able to attend physically. That means there should be online platform. Some may not even be able to attend it immediately. I mean, real life. That means we should have tapes. I remember we used to have CD from cassettes to CDs. Now we have videos on YouTube. Those are the activities. That's a breakdown of the activities. Now let's assume that for the seminar, we just um, come here and uh, the first thing, okay, let's do, today, let's just do Bible study first. We'll be doing praise and worship later. And then another day, okay, let's even start with the main seminar. Then we'll do Bible study. What is that? What is that? Chaos. That means there's no... Even though we plan to do refreshing manner, we plan to do the seminar, in fact, we know the activities. There will be, open, there will be prayers, there will be Bible study. We know the activities, but we have to arrange the activities in a logical manner, in a way that makes sense. So we worship God first because it's the one that is going to give us the knowledge and make it to be passed across smoothly 
and make people to understand and help them to do it. So we have to acknowledge God and worship him. It cannot be after. The opening charge is the part that really looks like teaching and you see the way Leia taught us very well. That's like the, the study, the Bible study one and then the main ministration is like preaching in a sense but it's still teaching. It's just that it's more elaborate with examples and all of that. Are you with me? So the way we have programmed it makes it to be realistic, makes it to work out, makes it start the power of planning. If we just decide that refreshing manner will be any time we call you, what's likely to happen? So, oh, in July, eh, we'll have refreshing manner on Tuesday. We just, we just call all of you. Will you be here? And then in August, we say we'll do it on first Friday of August. What's likely to many of men? Some of you must have gone to redemption camp. Maybe it's only my husband and I, and Leia that will be here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you have to think through. Think about the prevailing circumstances. Think about the resources available. Think about the human resources. Think, think, think. Then write down the activities. Then put time. That's what Leia was saying about time bound. And that programming will also mean that there must be time slot for each activity and for, for, for events or goals or objectives that are continuous, like refreshing manner is continuous. Please make it a specific time. If it's not specific, then you are not likely to get around it. So we've said that God is not against planning. Christians, please listen to me this afternoon. Somebody has recited Jeremiah 29, 11, that is thoughts towards us as thoughts of good, plans of good to do us well. So if God plans and we were created in his image, we're expected to plan. We see strategic planning in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 26. When God wanted to create it, I mean to create the earth, <laughs> what did he do? He created light first. So let there be light and there was light. Verse 3. God did not try to create human being before light. He didn't create animal before plants. And that's the way many people are living their lives. Some things must come before others. That's why what we call order. D. O R D E R. You must be able to settle down and determine the order of events in your life. What do you need to achieve first before your big goal? You are a girl or a lady. 21, 22. So, no, 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 no. I want to go for masters first. It's, it's a good idea, fine. But if you have knowledge, good knowledge, <laughs> sound one, you know that 22 is not the age to be playing and be doing PhD and be facing, you say, you are not, don't want to think about husband. I mean, if nobody is forthcoming, no problem. But if somebody is forthcoming and it looks like a good partner, a godly partner, then it's worth considering, it's worth considering and starting that relationship. Other than saying, no, 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 I don't want to think about that now. That statement is based on ignorance. Because we've said in this meeting many times that early 20s is the age to get married, not late. So if that's the age to get married, that's the age to get engaged to a good person, not playing around, seeing, seeing each other, seeing people, and then seeing you. Please, I'm pleading with you, don't chase the big picture without considering the things that should lead to the big picture. You want to be a successful career woman, no problem, but do you want to be married? If you want to be, then the one you don't have control over, you cannot manufacture husband. Let that one be settled quickly. 
There are many things in life that are like that, and you must always learn to identify them. There are certain things you don't have control over. If you are a young person in Nigeria, secondary school student, you don't have control over UME, SSC. So if you are in secondary school, that's not the time to think about husband. That's the time to focus and get very good grades out of secondary school. And make sure you pass UME very well because something might go wrong with results in another year and you might be very brilliant. And something, just, God forbid that anything goes wrong. So that's the time to focus. Pass your UME very well, get admission because you cannot give yourself admission. You don't have control over that one. Then other things that you have control over, maybe you want to learn a trade, you want to learn a skill, you can learn them after you've cleared the results. Somebody likes to have a career maybe in um, something that is, does not really fetch plenty money, but that's your passion. Wisdom and planning will tell you to do something else that can may help you to earn good income while you are pursuing the passion on by the side. But if you say, this is my passion, I want to focus on it, and that passion has no leg, it cannot carry you home. That's not good planning. I've used myself as an example for you, and I, I believe that if you think through what I'm saying, and you've seen the way we've used our lives as examples, I could have said uh, I wouldn't study medicine, I'll just study anything. After uh, I'm, at the end of it, I'm just going to be preaching. Even after graduating from medical school, I could have said I can't do postgraduate. Why the stress? But I still went ahead and did it. And then gradually I will be able to focus more on this. But at least I'm grateful to God. I've not had to beg anybody to eat. God provided life. So that, the point I made there is please know the big picture. Know the things that can make that big picture beautiful. That you will not turn to a beggar or be behind your mates. Know those things that you can still do. You can now plan them. Weave them into your plan and make your life beautiful to the glory of God. Though God wanted man to fellowship with him, he created all the things that man needed first. Plants, animals, the water, the land, everything. He settled all of them before he now created man. Maybe you are a young man here and you've seen a beautiful girl that you wish to marry. Are you really prepared? Have you prepared the ground? Have you prepared what you will need to take care of her before you take the girl? Many people are eager to take the girl before they think of preparing, providing. That's not God's pattern. Order is God's pattern and is the mother of increase. If your life is in order, you are not putting the cart before the oars, you plan it well, then you can increase, you will not decrease. Please note that undecided mind is not in faith. Many Christians think they are in faith when they are undecided. You're asking them, what exactly do you want? Like, I, don't really, I don't want to think about it. After all, if I plan now nah, and it changes, is it worth the plan? Yes, it's worth the plan. Even if it changes, it will be just a bit below. For example, uh, the NUC, Nigerian University Commission, demands 24 scientific papers to become a professor. I planned to have 60. So that anywhere they want to assess my papers, anywhere they take it to, anybody who... Now 24 be the first man. She has 60. We give God all the good. That was my plan. But eventually, we were asked to submit before I got feedback from where I submitted uh, 3 to, and I was able to submit 57. So if you too, you plan for something, 70%, even if you don't get 70%, you may get 60, but you will not likely get 40. So that plan, that's a power there. That when you have a plan, that power makes you to just succeed. You might not hit the point 
with your power. You might not be able to, you might not get there specifically, but you'll be around it. That plan will push you. That plan will, <laughs> in the night, in fact, this thing I'm describing for you, yesterday night, you know, whenever I have a message I like to focus, I don't want to do any other thing. But yesterday night, I got a feedback from one of those journals online and said, I must submit copyright form. I said, with these people. Thank God I had started the process before. So it was just to add somebody's signature, click and submit. So why did I stay up till 11? Because I had started a process that was part of a plan. And that process, now, if I had not submitted that paper, I wouldn't have been pushed to put any extra effort. So when you have a plan, sometimes it might be five minutes in a day, you would want to just push. That plan will push you. That's the power. It will push you to do something on it because there's a plan. So my plan when I was writing those 60 papers was that every day, no matter what I'm involved in, husband, children, preaching, Bible study, cleaning house, cooking, whatever, every day I must do something to write a scientific paper. Is it that I'm forming a new project or I am writing or correcting or something or collaborating with another person? Are you with me? Before I made that plan, I didn't meet up with senior lecturer time. But I wised up. I changed my lifestyle. Instead of waiting to a time that I'll be able to settle down and write for, no, every day I must be doing something, no matter how little. That's plan now to do it every day, and I set it at least six a year, that was the target. That planner helped me to go well above what was needed. Can you see the power? So when you begin to plan your life, you have targets, you have timeline, and you stick to it, you will achieve success at a very high rate. We've learned a lot about why we should plan. I just want to lend my voice and add uh, some things to what has been said. If you plan, you will fulfill purpose. If your purpose is one big purpose or one big goal, but because you have broken it down into activities and you have allotted time to the activities, you have put them into time slots, you will definitely fulfill the purpose. Can somebody give me an example of a goal? Do you people have goals? What, what's your goal, Excel? What do you want to become? UI. I don't know the meaning. Can you ask me? Come out, come out, so that we can, everybody can hear you. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, so it's, it's still needed in um, West UI, UI, U, UI, 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 Okay, okay I know interface, you okay. said that one. So it's, use, it's a necessary skill in web development. They're like okay, you, yeah. so what will make somebody to be a UI, US specialist? So there are programs that you have to take some courses. How many like courses? Anywhere. Okay. How many courses? Is a course. Actually, I want, I'm actually learning graphic design at this point. So from graphic design, I want to delve into UI UX. Okay, let's get my question very well. Okay. Like how many courses must someone take and pass before you can become that UI US designer? A course. Just one course in many modules or one module? Mm. Pardon me? Yeah. Several modules. Thank you. Don't worry. You've tried. So let's assume that 
there are several models. I, I, I'm getting at something. Your own might not be UIUS. Whatever is your own goal, ask yourself, what are the activities that if somebody can do these activities, the person will become this specialist. So when you are thinking about your life and your goal, don't take that big one and say, ah, God, help me to become UIUS uh, specialist. Don't go that route. Break it down. Ask other people who have done the exams before. Um, average of how many years does it take to become, to pass all these modules? And they tell you, average, if you focus, concentrate, average, four years. I don't know, I'm just giving an example. Don't sit in your corner and say, God, hey, manaba, manaba, be, 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 he may, in the name of Jesus, I become a UIE. No, you will pray, fine. Just say, God, this year, in Jesus' mighty name, I want to pass module one. Next year, two. Next three years, I would have focused more and be better. I would take two, the third year. And then I will be the special. Let's assume that there are four. So that first year, you have set, the, you have known the activities, you set the time, the goal, I mean, the timeline to pass one is this year. So you look for the syllabus. If there are 20 things in the syllabus, you can decide that I will read one per day and master it. So one month, I must finish the syllabus. Next month, I will revise. So that day, that's all you are thinking about. Don't think about the UIUS. Don't even think about the total module. Today is today. January what? I mean, July what? I must read the first page, the first um, lesson in the module, and you focus. Someone comes and says, oh boy, let's go to Shagamuna, or something is happening. They say, I will, I will go in four years' time. You focus. When I finish, ah, sorry, I'm doing this course. When I finish, oh, boy, ah, we didn't see you. you ah, sorry, is this PhD? By the grace of God, I'm finishing this month. Amen. Say amen with me now. Focus. You focus and do it. Today, just read. I'm just reading that one today. I'm not wondering, hey, will I pass the one of next year? Mm -mm. Uh, how will I read the one of tomorrow? No. If you have to go to work tomorrow and commute in traffic, you carry your note. Today is second lesson. I'm not going to read that second lesson on Tuesday. I'm going to read it tomorrow, Monday. Even if I have to go to work, I'll be reading it in the traffic. Today is for this lesson too. And I must read it today. That's how to live life. And that's how to live. That's how to succeed. And you must read that lesson too on Monday. Even if it's rainy and there is thunderstorm, you are reading that lesson too on that Monday. So when you see people succeed, no, they didn't just emerge from the moon. This is the system. This is the pattern. By Tuesday, I must read lesson three. I remember those days, people say, I, I know, they say, I start for you, you didn't attend this day. I say, I'm sorry. No, there's no one free day in medical school. One day, you say one day, you won't read. How do you want to pass? Because what is scheduled for that one day, you've missed it. And for you to cover up, it's going to affect another thing. This is how to live. If you live that way, you will be surprised that you can make a lot of money. Programming. Putting into time slots. Putting deadlines. So yesterday, two days ago, that's Friday and Saturday, my schedule for my life and destiny it's, you must write a book on planning. Is this rainy? It's rainy. You want to talk with husband? You want to greet children? I will still do all of that. But there must be a book on what? On planning. And the book was done, was finished. I completed it yesterday. If that goal did not exist, if that, and that goal is not a big goal, it's just an activity, just an objective, and the big goal of teaching, refilling, and refreshing the saints. But if there's no specific activity for those two specific days, 
And maybe I could have prayed in tongues. It's good throughout. That's one option. Or another person could have watched a little home video. In fact, my sister called me and she was talking for a long time. I was just saying, thank you very much. Thank you. You know, I have a preaching engagement. So it is well, it is well. And we have to round up the conversation. I love to speak with my sister. I enjoy speaking. But then there was a goal that is time bound. That must be accomplished. So fulfillment of purpose. If I continue like that, next week I produce another book. I produce another book. Then one day you just say, ah, doctor, I don't know how you do this thing. You mean you already had 20 books? I'll just smile and say, ah, God is helping us. God is helping us. But should I tell you the truth? God is helping us and we are also obeying God's word to schedule activities, to stick to our schedule. In the midst of it, you still be nice. Sometimes I'm writing and I'll give you a phone call. Don't you receive my phone calls? I'll just say, I just thought of saying hello to you. And I'll quickly switch off the phone. My phone many times is switched off. If there is no plan, there will be wastages. So that's another reason why we should plan. You waste time, money, energy, even anointing. There's no plan. You just live carelessly. The vision that is based on our plan determines where our resources will be channeled. I have a plan to raise people, to help people to become great people. If I have extra money, do you think I'm going to give it to someone else outside this place? Answer me now. I have extra money. I, in fact, God is talking to me, ministering to me to give to people. I will remember you before I remember other people. You will be more... People, people ask for money. Okay. Just say, ah, I need, in fact, in my office, when you are, you are riding a nice car like this, they think money should just be dropping from your skirt. I'll just look at them. Say, the people that, that are my people, I've not given them money. It's you, I'll be giving money all the time. Okay, now. So your resources will be channeled towards your goal, your plan, if there is an existing one. And you avoid wastages. So like we heard earlier on, there must be you must have a goal. I remember the story that someone said about uh, uh, Pastor Adeboe. If you have a meeting with him, maybe he has given you an appointment. If you are supposed to arrive 8 a.m. and your slot is 8 to 8.20, if you like, come at 8.19, he's not moved. He can't be angry. By 8.20, he's moving on to the next person. So you have your one minute instead of 20. I want to live my life like that. So that when I give you an appointment, I say, you want to have counseling with me, six hours, for one person. How? You waste your destiny. You waste, in the name of counseling, you now stay with, with one person for six hours. What about other people? Schedule them. So for you, it might not be counseling, but what I'm saying is, you must have a goal. That must be, fi your goal can even be to rest. The goal is to sleep. It's a goal. Go and sleep. Instead of fulfilling other people's vision and plans. Planning reduces the effect of uncertainty. Do you know the reason why many people are anxious about the future? Because there is no plan. So if there are two young people who have just graduated, one has had a plan to develop a skill and to also search for a job, maybe an employee for some time, and raise money, start his business. The other one doesn't have any skill, is just searching for a job. Please, who will be anxious? The first one or the second one? So if you're a Christian and you're anxious about any aspect of your life, check. You probably haven't planned. If you're anxious about your children's results, maybe you've not planned for them to have scheduled activities to study every day, Excuse me, if you are here and you are a student, whether primary school or <laughs> secondary university professional exams or you are an academic like me, please work on your academics every day. It's your life. That's your own work. And you should work on it every day. That way you will reduce anxiety. And if you are in business, 
Some days you sleep at home. Some days you go to your office. You already know your results. Whatever you are doing, plan so that you can reduce anxiety. Many Christians don't plan because they are expecting a miracle. Am I right? Say, ah, why have you not planned for that? Ah, God will do it. Ah, God is in control. Ah, people like that statement. God is in control. Sometimes all you are saying is you are lazy, you've not planned anything, and you are just pushing everything to God. God, our God plans and he expects us to plan. What you just need to do is to make sure you download the big picture from him. It's not your idea, it's God's idea. And then you find out the activities that are meant to fulfill the big picture. God is not against you planning those activities. At this time, I want to speak to everyone who has perceived a calling in one way or the other. You believe that God has called you and sent to you. Please plan your life. Many of our fathers, many of the older ones in the older generation who perceived the call of God felt that they should just read the Bible, pray, and do nothing. Some of them, they didn't really put biro and paper to this thing to plan it. And some of them were careless with their financial life. And you know what finances is? is, is like, it's like legs. If you throw it away, it can disrupt what you are carrying. Am I right? So please, don't, if God, you perceive the call of God on your life, don't just drop everything and close your mind. Please don't. Because God has different assignments for people in our days and ministries are in diverse forms. Don't close your mind and stop your work and you are not planning for your finances, you are not planning your family. You say, ah, Ah, no, you know, family planning, God will take care of all of them. You know, Joseph had two children, right? And his brothers had many. Okay, so who prospered more? Hallelujah. I'm not encouraging you to have two children. I'm just asking you, how much work do you want to do to sustain it? And don't, in the name of God has called you, just live your life carelessly, whether family or finance. If you plan, you will, you will avoid depending on other people. Is that right? And your life will bring more glory to God. So we um, learned a, a, some things about principles of planning. I'm just going to go over uh, some principles now. Some of them might be like repetition, but repetition will help us to really master them. Principles of planning. First, you will plan in view of knowledge, right? So that means your quality of your plan depends on the quality of the knowledge you have. Like I said, if you didn't know that it's more difficult to conceive in late 20s and on and on, you might still be dancing around and you don't get married on time. But if you have quality knowledge that your, the, the, a female's eggs are very viable in the early 20s and from 16 to early 20s, that's where you appeal most to people that are ready to marry you. So that's your flower age. That knowledge will guide you in how you behave. So you don't waste your time having boyfriend, drop this one, pick another one. You are not, don't waste that period. That's a period to be serious with God and know his mind. Concentrate, learn. Go and read books, watch videos, tapes on how to know God's will. So that you settle that matter on time. That knowledge is going to help you. If you want to have a business plan, you must have knowledge about that particular business. You want to be in ministry, you must have knowledge about how to do it. Get adequate knowledge from the Bible. Get adequate knowledge from experts on the particular goal at hand. Second principle, plan in line with the will of God. Yes, you have the knowledge now. You are planning. We are not saying because you want to plan, you just do what you like. Imagine for you a on of planning to relocate and start living in Canada. <laughs> Does it fit? You are not sure? I don't think so. I don't think so. So it must be in line with the revealed will of God. Maybe when the fashion manner has grown and one of you is Manning Nigerian chapter. 
Maybe I can go and start another chapter somewhere. But you are not ready now. Are you ready? And hallelujah. So set a definite goal. That we've said a lot on that. Always remember that your goal will have objectives. Break down the goal into objectives. Always remember SMART. Can you please say SMART? The goal must be specific. S must be measurable. That's M. A must be achievable. R, realistic. And T, time bound. Anything you want to achieve, extray it in view of that SMART. If it's not specific, you say, okay, I'm writing engineering professional exam. When do you want to finish? Eh, one day, one day, Sha. Ah, you can be there for 10 years. God forbid. I want to become a specialist doctor. In what specialty? Eh, I'm still thinking. I don't know. You won't start. As long as you don't know, you, you are not specific about the particular area. That objective or that goal is not smart then is it achievable? If I say I want to become a programmer now, CICU, or what is it again? <laughs> UIUS. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is, that achieve, <laughs> is that achievable for me with all the things I'm doing? I don't, no, it's not. It's not. Okay? Then the goal must be realistic. So if I say we want to complete, somebody is here, yeah, the way you people are praying about this, your refreshing center, why are you praying that we should complete the beam this year? Let's just trust God to finish the whole refreshing center. Do you know how much it is? 150 million. Is that realistic? Talk now. Say with God all things are possible, right? No, we are learning today. We are learning today to shift our thinking. Let's shift our thinking. If I say we will finish the refreshing manner this year, you, you, will you believe it? I want us to be practical. Let Leia let has taught us the ABC and the principles. This is a practical session now. Okay. You are part of the building committee. If I say we should finish refreshing, we are finishing refreshing manner this year, you, will you believe it? Okay. But if I say we want to, we want God to give us the beam, that slab and the beam this year, can you believe that one? You can believe that one. It's still expensive, oh, 20 million. But you can believe it. So that means that goal. But if I say all we want to do this year is just to raise 5M. Do you like that goal? You don't like that goal. So that raising 5M is below what we should aim at. The 150 million is too much. It's not realistic. Are you with me now? So even the 20 million of the beam, we are still trusting God. We don't even have 10 as I speak. So you will still trust God. It's not as if you are not having faith. But we're saying, let your faith be in what even you yourself you can believe. <laughs> Do you get it now? If that's all you can get from today's meeting, it's worth it. That when you say you are praying, don't just be praying and say, oh, Lua, bury me, it's okay. Ah, lift me up. Let me just get where, where, where is the okay that you want? Define it. I want to become a professor by year 2023. That's a goal. I have written that goal many years ago. That one is achievable, it's realistic. Do I still need faith? Yes, I still need faith because I'm not the one that will make myself one. I'm not the university system. They can say, we are processing it now. In another university, they may say they are not ready to process. So there's still faith. But even you yourself, you can believe you. You can tell God, I'm believing you for it. So if you start living our lives like that, we are not jumping steps. We will be achieving more. Rather than you are in one spot, and that unrealistic goal is already bending your head. Do we like that? Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I've explained to you another principle. Some of these things I told you is like repetition. But let it stick. Another principle. I've said, okay, principle one, plan in view of knowledge. 
plan according to the will of God, set a definite goal. Determine the activities. Make sure the objectives are... Uh, what is S again? Specific. Then sometimes we also say simple, specific, measurable. You can measure it. Achievable, realistic. And I've explained that realistic. It's based on what God puts in your heart. It's not just from the blues. And uh, it's something that you yourself, you can believe God for. It's not according to another person's faith. It's according to your own faith. Then, then you must set a specific time, time bound. You must put important things first. That's another principle that you must apply as a Christian. Important things. So if you plan your day, for example, how do you plan your day? Make sure you plan for God. If you don't have a plan for quiet time, you will never achieve it. In this Lagos, with traffic, there must be a plan for your quiet time. There must be a plan for spiritual things. Youth Fiesta is twice a year. Plan. First Sunday of January and July, I must be within Mate Compound. It's a plan. So anything that will support that plan, then you'll be putting them in place. First Saturday of every month, I must... If you have a plan to be here, you won't go for a wedding. It's because you don't have a plan to be here. That's why there's barrier. You are going for barrier on that. Can anybody invite me for a barrier on third Saturday? No, it's not, not even my father. <laughs> Nobody. Because that plan is known, is communicated, and it's clear. But if you don't have a clear plan, then other things can always encroach into your life. Put important things first. I've explained things you don't have control over. They are also important things. Allocate specific time, even to the specific activities. Have consistent time for a continuous activity. I've explained that one. Then I'm repeating. Write down your goal. Write it. Research has shown that only about 3% of human beings write down their goals. No, no wonder. Only 2% are at the top. Abby? Only 2 to 3% are at the top people that are high flyers and high achievers. So why don't you determine to be amongst the 2 to 3% that achieve the 80% accomplishments? You can determine. You can be a... Like start writing down your goal. Even if your goal is... All, all I want to start with now is, what am I going to do tomorrow? Write it down. I will call pastor to greet her. It's a plan. It's part of your plan. I will get to the market to buy so 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 thing. If you don't write down the things you will buy in the market, you can buy half and forget half, right? So write down a step by step process to achieve the objectives. Do you know that pilots don't fly without a written plan? There's a plan for flight, flight plan. If they don't have a plan, they won't even allow them to take off at all. So maybe that's why people that write down their plans, they fly in life. Do you want to fly in life or you want to crawl? Then start writing down your goals, your objectives. Write down the time. God supports writing. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. When this prophet has stood upon his watch and pray, God said, when I answer you, write down the answer. Write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. This vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. Even if it seems slow, wait patiently for it. So I'm encouraging you, please write. Plan the human resources to act on the activities. You still remember layer slide? Resources. Anything that doesn't have a human being or robot now, AI, artificial intelligence, if there is none attached to it, that thing will not get done. So even in a ministry like this, sometimes you come around and you are wondering, why don't we have children section? 
It's because you've not volunteered to teach them. That's why. The children are eager. We are eager to start. It's because we don't have a volunteer to teach them. Why don't we have this thing ongoing? Because there's no woman being ready to do it. Remember that God did not allow rain to fall on earth until he created human being, right? Nobody to till the ground. So why, why putting rain and then weeds will just spill everywhere? So learn it today. Anything you want to do, if you can't do it by yourself and there's nobody to do it, that thing may not get done. Or if you have two people in the house, and you don't assign the specific tasks to one person. You know what usually happens? Nobody does it. But if it's only one person, he knows that there's no younger brother or sister that will do it. That person will rise up to the task. Avoid activities that do not contribute to your goal. Anything that is not going to contribute to your goal, avoid it. Don't say, eh, ah, it will take me only five minutes. Let me quickly do it. That five minutes supposed to be deployed to fulfill one activity in your destiny. So imagine now that I'm learning to sew. I say, ah, all these fashion designers, ah, they're collecting too much money. I even want to learn to sew. That would be very foolish. Because that goal is going to derail me from my own goal. It's better to spend money on something that is not your core activity, that will not contribute to your purpose. Spend money on that one and concentrate on what will make you to forge ahead. The Lord will grant us understanding. Commit your plans to God. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine. So like I said earlier, what you think should be the least that happens in your life. So please think the more you think, the more you accomplish because God is set, is ready to do more than you can think. But he needs you to think. So we've talked a lot about different aspects where planning is needed. I just want us to discuss some practical examples. So we've uh, learned today that planning is needed for your spiritual life, for your health goal, and I'm arranging them in that order. Your spiritual life, your health, then social, that's family. Before you move on to career and financial. Please, always arrange your life in that order. Plan your life in that order. Anything that deals with God, put it first. It's not because we are in church, it's the reality of life. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Take yourself seriously. Take your spiritual life seriously. Plan for prayer time. Plan to pray. Some of you have never attended refreshing man and prayer meeting before. We're not begging you to, uh, um, to join us so that we'll be many. We are happy as we are there. But it's going to help your life. Many times when we finish refreshing man and prayer meeting, do you know what happens to me? I just feel like praying. So I pray for another one. Uh. Because prayer is a spirit. It can just come on you. And it will hate your own prayer. So I always try to, I plan my activities on Friday such that that's six to seven. I'm not putting any other thing there. When, because as we finish that refreshing manner prayer meeting, I still feel like praying. So I, 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 I use the opportunity to pray more. Please plan to pray. Plan for prayer time. Don't just say, shakala, five minutes, and that's all. Ah, and you want to succeed in this life. Plan to pray. Plan to study the Bible. If you don't plan, you will never get around it. Plan for personal retreat. Plan to fast. If you don't have a day of the week where you fast, you will never fast. You would feel like, ah, today I'm really hungry. I'm feeling very weak. I don't want to collapse. You go and eat. But if there's a particular day, you already know it is that day. You would achieve it. Plan for your health. Please go and watch my videos on health and practice the things you learn. Eat healthy, plan. If you don't plan to eat healthy, you will never eat healthy. It's not easy to prepare vegetable. If there is no plan for it, 
you will just buy bread and eat biscuits. Plan for exercise. Plan to sleep well. Your social life, family life. Leia has helped us a lot with uh, before marriage. Please plan your family. I'm very passionate about this. If you have two children now, that means you're a family of four, right? Please lend me your ears. According to the statistics for poverty level in the U.S., poverty level for a household of four in U.S. in year 2022 is $27,750 per annum. $27,750 per annum. If any household earns less than that in the U.S., that household is considered as below poverty level. Can you convert that to Naira? 27750 You can even knock up the seven fifty. Just say $27,000. That's about 21 million Naira. Just a rough estimate. Am I right? Are you following? What that statistics is saying is that if a household that have two children is any less than 21 million naira per annum, they are likely to fall below poverty level. That's average of 1.7 million per month. Sister Foli, what are you talking about? <laughs> My family, we don't even earn 1.2 million. Are you saying we are poor? I did not say so. I'm telling you, know these things. Have this knowledge so that you can plan. Your wife's tummy is shooting out again. You say, ah, what happened? It's a mistake. Ah. This knowledge will help you. It's very, very easy to fall below poverty level in Nigeria. Because we are used to a lot of things. We don't even consider them as poverty. Can you get up now and say you want to travel to U.S. just to travel for holiday? You don't have the means. You don't con and you don't see yourself as poor. <laughs> are you are you following the illustration? There are many things that in this part of the world people cannot achieve. You can't move around the way you like. You can't send your your children to very good schools that will help them to be able to compete with their peers globally. And you don't see yourself as poor. You don't see any big deal. Then you want to have another child. Please plan your family. Have I said enough? plan at least one day to go out with your spouse or to stay indoor with your spouse, anyone. If you go out every day, maybe your own is to stay inside. Just look at her face. I'm talking to the men now. Look at your wife's face. I say, Oni, I just want us to be together alone. No child around. No, no family, nobody. We're just alone. If you cannot be alone in your house, go to one eatery. Even if it's one restaurant behind your house and all you are going to spend there is 1,000 naira, sit down with your wife, not with phone, and just look at her and talk heart to heart. Many Christian homes are dying. And it's because we don't plan. We don't need a lot of money to achieve this. All you need to show is your commitment. And the fact that you are knowledgeable, you know that love is living and it can die. You are, are you aware? It's a living thing. It can die. How did you fall in love in the first instance? It's because you like some things and your wife liked you. If she didn't like you, no matter how much God spoke, she won't agree. So many people are living their lives in such a way that their wives don't, their wives don't like you just that they can't say it. They don't like the current version of you now can't say it, but they can't say it. So I plead with you, if, it's, if, if the person I'm talking to now is the wife, you are the one that is hearing me, please plan for your marriage, plan for you as a couple to be together. Set specific goals to be a better wife. Set specific goals. So maybe anytime your husband talks, you reply bah, 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 immediately. Just have a goal. I'm telling you what I do. There was, a day, there was a time some months ago I said, okay, for the next six months, no complaint. It's only my husband that can answer whether I achieved it. <laughs> you know, we women, my husband will say, when we finish doing something for you, you will have another one that you want to complain about. So I decided that 
no matter how much that complaint is on my heart, or I feel, ah, only why don't you do it like this? Or do it? I'll just keep, I'll just smile. So what I achieve is that instead of saying I don't like, I'll smile. When he said, what did I have? Just I will increase the smile. And do you know what? I discovered that after some time, the smile will now go back inside, and I'll be happy. Is that practical for you? I planned it, and it worked for me. I, I was, I'm not happy inside, but I decided I want to smile. And that plan worked. I smile. I smile again. And after a while, that thing will just dissolve. And that will be the end. So maybe some wives need to smile more and complain less. And some husbands too need to complain less and be more available and open their mouths more to say, I love you. <laughs> You can plan it, even though your father didn't know how to say I love you, but you can plan to do it. Uh, financial goals. I'm also very passionate about this. Am I free to call anybody who is working? Anybody, you are a worker, you are not a student, raise up your hand. How much did you plan to end this year? Did you, no, you are not telling us, but did you have any plan to say this year, I must earn at least 12 million this year. No plan. Okay. Anybody who had any plan like that? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No, so the next question is for you. How much did you plan that you must invest this year? Now, let there be rain. Let there be sunshine. Let there be school fees. Let there be a uh, completing part of my house. Uh, I want to do the fence. Uh, children need uh, new wears and new shoes. Mom, uh, their mom has come to give me a list. They need to buy new bags. Whatever happens, there's actually be in church. I must invest at least two million this year. Anybody has such a plan? God bless you. Uh, no, I'm not saying two million. Me, have I invested? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just giving as an example. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to tell you mine, but I have a goal. Many Christians don't have. You can even have a goal to make money, but many Christians don't have a goal of how much to invest. And we need to get there. We need. To, you know why? God says, "I will bless you more and more." I will increase you more and more. That means, my understanding of that scripture is that God doesn't want you ever to be in a situation where last year you were worth 50 million, this year you will now be worth 40. It's not God's purpose. Even if God asks you to give 10 million, it's because he wants to give you 50. 10 million dollars. <laughs> it's because he wants to give you 50. Even if, so are you think I want you I want you to shift your brain to what I am saying shift your mindset that you must have a plan of how much to invest so because I have a plan now this month although my own investment is going into something structural not not fully liquid but I had a plan that this month I must put this amount into this building project. Actually, we will come. So I need to calculate if that pro if that thing will not happen. If I've not reached that amount, if the actual B is six, maybe I will buy three years. I'm just giving you an example. Actually, I wish I had. I, I wish I'm wearing another pair of shoes as I'm speaking. But that budget will not allow another pair of shoes for now. I will still wear the ones in the, in the house. So that's the way to live. Don't, and you know, we've said this twice this year. I'm repeating it. If you earn whatever amount of income and there's no specific plan of how much to invest, it will fizzle out. The resources to be, uh-uh. With all the people that want you to give them money, uh, it's not even enough. <laughs> Your salary is not enough to go around. So I want you to know that it is God's will for you to have a plan of how much to invest. So now let's assume that somebody needs money and I'm in a position to give that person money. 
this is what I do. I'm not teaching you what I don't do. So I said, okay, I need to give this person money. I'll just call Leia. Leia, please, oh, I need to conduct a program. I need money. <laughs> because I must give somebody this money or I must sow this amount into this church project. Or, Okay, let me give you an example so that you know that I'm not kidding. When we wanted to do this flooring, you know, we just did this flooring and we contributed money. The money did not drop from heaven. As usual, I'd already had my plans for how my salary would go. But it dropped in my spirit that it was God's will to do this flooring. Am I going to tell you to bring money when I've not put a substantial amount of money down? No, I wouldn't do that. So I needed to put a substantial amount down that would be like times five or times six of what other people are contributing. So what would I do? I needed to float a program to make money to achieve that contribution. That's how to live. Don't go into your investment and to your savings if God did not specifically tell you to dip your hand into it. You must be living your life in a way that you are growing to become more and more and more and at the same time responsible. Can you put them together? Hallelujah. Budget your income. So, budget for tithe. Don't immediately remove your tithe. Don't say, Sister Folu said we must not touch the money we want to invest. You now go and invest your tithe. That's a curse. Budget for your rent. Don't be the kind of Christian that it's time for rent. You now be saying, Dear brother, you'll be writing long letters to some people, Dear sister. No, we don't want people living like that. Arrange, plan your finances. If your rent is 600,000 per annum, that's 50K every month. Set it aside. Go and put it where your hand cannot touch it. Plan for kingdom investments. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's time to give in church. And you really, really wish to give. Or maybe in fellowship, we've been talking about building, refreshing center. You wish to give. You wish you are a part of it. But you don't have the money. Do you know why you can't contribute? Because you don't have a plan. It's not possible for me to say, I want to give to the person, man. I can't. Because every month, as I collect my salary, there is a plan. A certain percentage. There's no discussion, no story. Um, if that amount, that specific amount, must go straight into the account. So if for any reason I need to do extra, then I must generate it. But that basic, nobody is forcing you to do anything. We're just encouraging you. Plan your life. Take yourself serious with God. So that God will know that I have one serious daughter somewhere. He can rely on you. I have one serious son somewhere. He can depend on you. I'm trusting God to lift me up to a level that we, can, we may want to do something in refreshing sense and it's 20 mil. I'll just write a check. I won't even announce it here. So don't be surprised if God is blessing me more than some other people. Plan your life for ministry. Can you say plan my life for ministry? I will plan my life for ministry. Don't get to the evening of your life and you are still running all around. You can't fulfill, you can't spend more time on your purpose. And that's why as Christians, we can't spend anyhow. Save, invest, plan in a way that you can spend more time on God's work as you grow older. Prepare yourself for what God has revealed to you. Read books. It's part of the plan. Read books. Attend seminars. Watch YouTube videos. It's not every message that you are sent to preach. Even if God has sent you to sing, some people, their own is worship. Some people, their own is deliverance songs. You see, when Tokba Alabi is singing, is it the same as Nathan Ebasi? Discover your own area. Go and polish yourself in that area. Load yourself. Prepare so that when your day of manifestation comes, it meets you prepared. Remember, the day of manifestation, there will be no time to prepare because you'll be very busy. Develop your capacity in every aspect. I want to conclude now. And thereafter, we will entertain questions. What we have said today is that planning is part of God's nature. And we are supposed to imitate him. We should determine what it takes to achieve our goal. Sit down. 
settle down, ask questions, go online. If I want to be making cake that is successful and can go anywhere in the world, what does it take? What kind of trainings do I need to attend? Find out. How can I achieve it? Write it down. Put time. And skip, stick to your schedule. Be committed to your plans. I'm not saying your face should be hard and you never attend anybody's party. No. If anybody in refreshing manner has a baby, I can also plan. It's part of plan. You also plan to be part of the naming ceremony. I said, I want, there's one schoolmate that we met in. What's that your secondary school? Molusi College. <laughs> some, some 20 years ago, she gave birth to a baby and so what? Is that your, is that your friend? Then that's what you are spending your evening to do. The question is, how is that relevant? How is that person relevant to where you are going in life? If you think the person may be relevant, fine. You can even fly from U.S. to attend a naming ceremony if that relationship is significant to you. So please weigh relationships. Because for you to achieve all these things we have talked about, you need to weigh them and be very sure of how relevant they are to your own life. And I pray that God will grant us more and more wisdom in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for what we have been able to discuss. We are asking today that in every aspect of our lives, even as ladies in feeding our household, give us the grace to plan. Help us to master this skill, this art, to apply it to every aspect of our lives. Even planning our dressing, planning our spiritual journey, planning our divine assignment. Help us to be conscious of the fact that nothing happens until we rise up to make it happen. Help us to be conscious of this and help us to rise up to make many things happen in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord.